Hurricane Nate makes second landfall slamming into the Gulf Coast leaving thousands without power and bringing up to 11 feet of flooding Hurricane Nate made its second landfall near Biloxi late Saturday as a Category 1 storm with winds of 85 miles per hour, threatening parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama with torrential rain and flooding. The National Hurricane Center said the storm surge along the Mississippi coast could reach 11 feet, according to AL.com. On social media, people posted photos of flooding in Biloxi and other locations along the Gulf Coast. Widespread power outages were also reported throughout the coastal regions of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and the Florida Panhandle. The center of the storm will move across the deep south Tennessee Valley and central Appalachian Mountains through Monday. Earlier Saturday, Nate passed to the east of New Orleans, spearing the city its most ferocious winds and storm surge. And its quick speed lessened the likelihood of prolonged rain that would tax the city's weakened drainage pump system. The city famous for all-night partying was placed under a curfew, effective at 7 p.m., but the mayor lifted it when it appeared the storm would pass by and cause little problems for the city. Still, the streets were not nearly as crowded as they typically are on a Saturday night and Mayor Mitch Landryu asked people to shelter in place. Nate is expected to weaken after landfall. The storm made its first landfall in a sparsely populated area of southeast Louisiana. Nate, the fourth major storm to strike the United States in less than two months, killed at least 30 people in Central America before entering the warm waters of the Gulf and bearing down on the U.S. South. The hurricane made landfall just after 8 p.m. Eastern Time Saturday. The hurricane warning for New Orleans had been changed to a tropical storm warning. Though it appears the city has been spared the worst, it could still face wind gusts as high as 55 miles per hour, CBS News reported. While it appears we're being spared, our hearts go out to Mississippi, said Amos Cormier, president of Plaque Women's Parish, a low-lying area in the New Orleans area. The hurricane center was expected to pass over portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee late Saturday through Sunday night, eventually weakening to a tropical depression. Before then, storm surges of up to 11 feet on the Mississippi-Alabama border were still possible, the National Hurricane Center said. A hurricane warning remained in effect for the Gulf Coast from Grand Isle, Louisiana to the Alabama-Florida border, according to the National Weather Service. Cities along the Mississippi coast such as Gulfport and Biloxi were on high alert. Some beachfront hotels and casinos were evacuated. Nate had earlier approached the mouth of the Mississippi River at 4 p.m. Central Time, moving north-northwest at 23 miles per hour, the NHC said. After hitting the U.S. Gulf Coast, the storm is likely to veer to the northeast and cut through Alabama, the state likely to be hit hardest. Republican Governor Kay Ivey urged residents in areas facing heavy winds and storm surges to take precautions. On Alabama's Dauphin Island, water washed over the road Saturday on the island's low-lying west end, said Mayor Jeff Collier. The storm was projected to bring storm surges from 7 to 11 feet near the Alabama-Mississippi state line. Some of the biggest impacts could be at the top of funnel-shaped Mobile Bay. With Nate marching to a second landfall on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, gauges show tides are four feet above normal from Shell Beach, Louisiana, east of New Orleans, to Bayou of Batter, Alabama, southwest of Mobile. In Mississippi, Hancock County Emergency Management Director Brian Adams said his agency received reports of rising water on low-lying streets facing the Mississippi Sound and the Bay of St. Louis. In Biloxi, authorities reported water from Biloxi Bay rising on some streets. The window for preparing is quickly closing, Alabama Emergency Management Agency Director Brian Hastings said. Florida Governor Rick Scott warned residents of the Panhandle to prepare for Nate's impact. Hurricane Nate is expected to bring life-threatening storm surges, strong winds and tornadoes that could reach across the Panhandle, Scott said. The evacuations affect roughly 100,000 residents in the western panhandle.
between 4 and 8 inches of rain will fall from far southern Mississippi and northern and western Alabama to northern Georgia, middle and eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina in the Virginia Panhandle, ACU weather forecast. Nate will mark the fourth major storm to slam the United States in the current hurricane season, following Harvey, Irma, and Maria, which devastated Texas, Florida, and Puerto Rico, respectively. But as a Category 1 or 2, the weakest in the five-category ranking used by meteorologists, Nate may not pack the same punch as its predecessors. Major shipping ports across the central U.S. Gulf Coast were closed to inbound and outbound traffic on Saturday, as Nate intensified in storm surges of up 11 feet, were expected at the mouth of the Mississippi River. The storm has curtailed 92% of daily oil production and 77% of daily natural gas output in the Gulf of Mexico, more than three times the amount affected by Harvey. Workers had been evacuated from 301 platforms and 13 rigs as of Saturday, said the U.S. Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. Before heading north into the Gulf, Nate brushed Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, home to beach resorts such as Cancun and Playa del Carmen, the NHC said. The storm doused Central America with heavy rains on Thursday killing at least 16 people in Nicaragua, 10 in Costa Rica, 2 in Honduras and 2 in El Salvador. Thousands were forced to evacuate their homes and Costa Rica's government declared a state of emergency. Still a Category 1 hurricane, Nate was approaching the mouth of the Mississippi River at 4 p.m. Central Time, moving north-northwest at 23 miles per hour, the NHC said. Maximum sustained winds were hovering at about 90 miles per hour with higher gusts, but the hurricane could still strengthen to Category 2 before landfall. The NHC issued a hurricane warning from Grand Isle, Louisiana to the Alabama-Florida border. A state of emergency was declared for more than two dozen Florida counties and for the states of Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. The three states have been mostly spared during this hectic hurricane season. This is the worst hurricane that has impacted Mississippi since Hurricane Katrina Mississippi Emergency Management Director Lee Smithson said Saturday. Everyone needs to understand that, that this is a significantly dangerous situation. Evacuation orders are in place in several states. Casinos closed at 5 p.m. in Mississippi to deter people from staying out as the storm hits. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards warned on Saturday that the hurricane may strengthen to a Category 3 before it makes landfall. We feel like we're in a pretty good place right now, but you just never know what you're going to get, he told CNN on Saturday. There are 1,300 National Guardsmen troops stationed in Louisiana alone to help with the storm. President Donald Trump on Saturday approved an emergency declaration for Mississippi just as the hurricane made landfall, The Hill reported. The declaration gives the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, authorization to coordinate all disaster relief work, supplementing local and state agencies. On Saturday morning, the president tweeted his support for the southern states and said FEMA, the strained Federal Emergency Management Agency, was on hand to help. Our great team at FEMA is prepared for Hurricane Nate. Everyone in La, MS, Al, and Florida please listen to your local authorities and be safe. Trump said. Nate is the latest in a string of deadly hurricanes which have wreaked havoc on the South, the Caribbean and parts of Central America since August. Residents in New Orleans and Mobile, Alabama, were seen preparing for the storm with sandbags on Friday and Saturday. Nate was suddenly upgraded from a tropical storm to a Category 1 hurricane on Friday afternoon. Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, and Mississippi declared states of emergency as the storm twisted toward the U.S. Gulf Coast on Friday. The National Hurricane Center issued hurricane and storm surge warnings for southeast Louisiana and the Mississippi and Alabama coasts. Nate is the latest in a succession of destructive storms this hurricane season. The storm is forecast to dump 3 to 6 inches of rain on the region, with isolated totals of up to 12 inches. That much rain led authorities to warn of flash flooding and mudslides. By mid-afternoon Friday, 
Nate was moving at a speed of 21 miles per hour, 33 kph. Its center was located about 125 miles, 200 kilometers, east-southeast of Cozumel, Mexico, and was expected to reach the U.S. late Saturday or early Sunday. Evacuation orders were issued for some coastal communities, including the Louisiana towns of Jean Lafitte and Grand Isle. Shelly Jambin, owner of Shoreway Supermarket in Grand Isle, said she plans on riding out the storm at her store, even though it's across the street from the beach. She bought it two years before Hurricane Katrina struck in 2005 and has weathered far more threatening storms than eight. It's a mild one for us, she said. 70 to 80 miles per hour winds? We get that in a winter storm. The state mobilized 1,300 National Guard troops. Some were headed to New Orleans, where summer storms already have exposed problems with the city's fragile pumping system. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards urged residents to make final preparations quickly and stressed that Nate will bring the possibility of storm surge reaching up to 11 feet in some coastal areas. We don't anticipate that this is going to cause a devastating impact to New Orleans or exceed the ability for the pumps, Edwards said Thursday. It's going to hit and move through our area at a relatively fast rate, limiting the amount of time it's going to drop rain, Edwards said. But this is a very dangerous storm nonetheless. Mississippi Governor Phil Bryan declared a state of emergency in six southernmost counties. State officials, at a briefing Friday in Gulfport, warned that Nate's main danger in that state will be from up to 10 feet of storm surge in low-lying coastal areas, as well as from winds that could damage mobile homes. If you are in an area that is flooded, I would recommend you evacuate that area until the storm has ended and the water has receded for your own personal safety and for the safety of the first responders that will be responding in the event you are trapped, Brian said. The storm threatened to disrupt one of the Mississippi coast's biggest annual tourist events, the Cruise in the Coast Auto Show. Biloxi firefighters warn more than 700 recreational vehicle campers that they may need to leave early. The event continued as normal Friday, but Saturday's events were canceled, replaced by a brief closing ceremony. Dozens of offshore oil and gas platforms and drilling rigs in the Gulf of Mexico have been evacuated as Nate churns through warm waters. Ingalls Shipbuilding, the Mississippi coast's largest industrial employer, announced Friday that only a skeleton crew of necessary employees would work Saturday and Sunday at the Pascagoula shipyard. The northern Gulf Coast areas targeted by Nate largely have been spared the worst effects of a catastrophic hurricane season, but Louisiana's emergency declaration for Nate isn't its first since the start of the summer. In August, a weakened Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Louisiana, after dealing a devastating blow to Texas and then nudging back into the Gulf of Mexico. Edwards also issued an emergency declaration in August for storm-related flooding in New Orleans. The National Hurricane Center issued a hurricane warning from Grand Isle, Louisiana to the Alabama-Florida border. Officials ordered the evacuation of part of coastal St. Bernard Parish east of New Orleans ahead of the storm.